Martin from Freefin Cal, and in this video, let's talk about how to measure investment risk. Investment risk can be measured in so many different ways, uh, each of them looking at different aspects of risk. Sometimes you call it volatility as well. Uh, the most popular way is standard deviation, and it is represented as uh, a measure of volatility in almost all investment portals. You may have seen all my uh, mutual fund reviews, I actually use something called as uh, rolling standard deviation, rolling volatility to, uh, to uh, debit risk. So I'm going to show you how uh, to understand what standard deviation means and what is the uh, what is volatility that we are talking about. So let's take any mutual fund or a stock, and I plotted the annual returns here versus the uh, versus time. So the annual returns on one year is 15 percent, next year is minus 15 percent, then it's 30 percent, uh, minus 30 percent, 5 percent, plus 17 percent, and so on. And uh, suppose I take the average of all these returns. Now let's everybody knows how to calculate the average. Of course, uh, it is not uh, it is not defined just as uh, adding all these numbers and dividing by the total number, uh, number of such numbers. That's not how the average should be defined. We'll talk about that. But let's say the average for now is 10% and it's the dotted line right in the uh, center right there. Now, I want to know how much uh, each return deviates from the average. And a measure of this deviation or rather an average measure of such deviation is called the standard. So I measure the deviation of this 15% as 15% minus the average 10%. Then I have minus 15% minus 10%, which is this return. And then I have 30% minus uh, the average 10% and so on. So let's call this deviation D1, D2 and D3 and so on. Notice that some deviations are positive. For example, this is a positive deviation and that's a negative deviation. So uh, we don't want to take uh, the sum of positive and negative deviations. That's kind of messy because the average itself uh, is a sum of positive and negative returns. We don't want the deviation also to be uh, defined as a sum of positive and average of positive and negative deviations. So what we do is to square the deviation. So we take the average of d1 squared plus d2 squared plus d3 squared plus d4 squared and so on divided by n. That's the average of the deviation squared. As you know, uh, square means you just so suppose I have two, uh, two squared is four. That is two into two. But if I have minus 2, minus 2 into minus 2 is also 4. So if I square a negative number, I will, I'm guaranteed to get a positive value. So d1 squared, d2 squared, d3 squared, etc. are all positive. And I take the average of the square of the deviations and that um, is the measure. And I define this as a measure of average deviations uh, from, you know, from, the, uh, from the average itself average of the deviation from the average that's essentially the average deviation square and to define my standard deviation i just take the square root of this that's how the standard deviation is defined of course uh, technically speaking you, you have to uh, divide by n minus 1 because of a, what is known as a, a bias uh, but for large data sets it doesn't matter whether you divide by n or n minus 1 that you can take this safely to be the definition of the uh, standard deviation this is the definition that is used to measure uh, uh, volatility in mutual funds or stocks. But what is usually done is they use uh, monthly returns. I have used annual returns as a representation, but they use monthly returns to uh, calculate the standard deviation. For example, value research, it gives you the standard deviation over the last three years. So it takes the, uh, over the last three years, it calculates the monthly returns and computes the standard deviation. Now, there are uh, many implicit assumptions here which we do not talk about and it's very important to understand. Uh, we have assumed that these data points, these annual returns fall on a nice bell-shaped curve like this. This is known as a normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution. We have assumed that they fall on this kind of a distribution. All the data points fall on that kind of a distribution. And if they do fall, ideally fall in, uh, on such a distribution, the mean or the average, which is the 10% that you see here, will be the peak value. That is when, so the average is not just the uh, sum of all data sets divided by the number of uh, the data, number of the data set. You, that's not how the average should be defined. The average is rigorously defined as uh, if the, return, the data points fall on a bell curve, that is the frequency of, with which they occur, 
and the returns in the uh, x axis uh, in the x axis so if they fall on a bell curve then the average would be the most probable frequency that's the most probable value is defined as the average and the standard deviation which we just calculated as the average deviation from the average that will be defined as the width of this curve so width of this how fat this distribution is so the standard way to represent this would be to say um, 10% which is the average plus or minus the standard deviation. So let's say the standard deviation is 2% then 10% plus or minus 2% would be uh, in, uh, the past range of returns going from 8% to 12%. So typically for bonds in the market which is trade in the market that will be the kind of uh, risk or volatility associated. But for a stock or for gold uh, the standard deviation would be much larger and it will be comparable to the um, average itself. So you get something like 10% plus or minus 15%. So that means it's a huge range in returns possible. No matter whether you are investing uh, investing for 5 years or 25 years or 50 years, the standard deviation would be significantly high for and comparable to the average of uh, stocks. Please uh, recognize many people make this mistake. This 10% is simply this arithmetic average, the normal average that we know of. It has got nothing to do with XIRR, it has got nothing to do with uh, annualized return or anything like that. This is simply the arithmetic average and you are supposed to represent arithmetic average plus or minus standard deviation. That is the value plus or minus the spread in the value. That is the uh, essential representation of standard deviation. If the data points fall on a bell curve, which they never do, a stock market returns or any kind of uh, market returns never fall on a bell curve. There are uh, problems because of uh, many reasons why they do not. Uh, but this is a very, very, very approximate representation of volatility. Now, if a so for example, if I have 10% plus or minus 2%, the, the so-called bell curve will look nice and sharp like this. It looks nice and lean like this. But if I have 10% plus or minus 15%, it will be a broad kind of bell curve, so it will be like nice uh, or, uh, uh, or, or much more uh, wider uh, area in the x-axis. So that is essentially how standard deviation is defined. Now what I do is something called rolling standard deviation. So what I do is, um, so let me just represent that. So let us say I, I have a set of monthly returns like this. Suppose I have a set of monthly returns like this. I calculate the standard deviation for, let's say, a first set like that. That's my first duration. I calculate the standard deviation here, and I just shift this duration by just one month. So I shift it, and my second standard deviation would be that value. Then I shift it again by one more month. That's my third standard deviation, and then my fourth standard deviation, and so on. I keep shifting it month after month after month after month. So that's how the rolling, and I plot all those values. That gives me the rolling. Uh, standard deviation. So, standard deviation is the uh, simplest measure of uh, investment volatility. You can easily classify investments as a, for example, in stocks, you can classify it as large cap, mid cap, small cap using standard deviation. You can classify um, stocks and bonds and gold uh, easily in terms of standard deviation. So, I have, I have several posts on risk versus reward for different investments. So, please uh, understand uh, what standard deviation is. It is more important for you to understand risk than it is uh, for you to understand returns. Returns can wait. So, um, uh, let me know if uh, this kind of uh, representation in the board uh, is easy to understand. If you want me to improve on this, uh, please do leave a comment below. And uh, we will talk about another method of measuring investment risk next week. So, thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.